So again, we have uh, two artist problems. One is how do we represent objects in the real world? We can view them as compositions of other objects. Uh, the big one during the Renaissance is how do I draw something that looks realistic? So here's a building in Nuremberg. Anybody know what the main use of that building is nowadays? <laughs> This is uh, actually, uh, well, part of it at least. Uh, part of this building is now a youth hostel. Uh, so, oh. um, so if you go to Nuremberg and you're under 26, then you can actually stay in what uh, used to be an old castle. Um, but uh, there's two important features about any realistic scene. Uh, the one important feature is uh, kind of the most obvious. The more distant an object is, the smaller it appears to be. And this is uh, this falls in the general category of foreshortening. Uh, the other one is we have this convergence of what we might think about as parallel lines. Now, buildings aren't necessarily the best uh, the best indicator of this because not all buildings have parallel lines. But if we were to take, for example, this roof line here and this uh, eave line here, if those are nominally parallel then these two lines meet someplace over around here. And we see other lines that are parallel to this are going to meet over there someplace else as well. And so the two things that we see, the obvious one foreshortening, the less obvious one is convergence of parallel lines. And uh, Durer is very familiar with the uh, idea of foreshortening. So this is uh, one of Durer's early woodcuts. This is, uh, I believe this is uh, Saint Jerome. And, um, and again, what we see is to convey the sense of distance, we have this objects in the background appear smaller than objects in the foreground. So Durer is very familiar with the use of foreshortening. And on the other hand, he, and this does make an appearance in the painter's manual. Again, practical geometry for the artisan. If you want to, uh, if you want to, for example, construct a sign that people can read from a distance, uh, in order to make the letters up at the top of the sign, appear the same size as letters at the bottom of the sign, it's important to make those letters larger. And Durer's uh, solution is essentially what we need to do. We need to make sure that these letters subtend the same angular measure as the letters down here. So wherever our ideal observer is, if we look at the angle subtended by the letters up at the top, it's got to make, we've got to make sure that those, that is the same angle as, uh, as that is, that as is subtended at the bottom. Uh, if you look on street, uh, the writing on streets, so the uh, pedestrian crossing uh, signs that are painted on the uh, on, on the uh, on roads, uh, there is actually the same sort of foreshortening issue that has to be uh, used to make those signs readable. Uh, meanwhile, uh, let's go back to perspective. So the important thing about perspective is that we do need radial symmetry about a vanishing point. Go back to that Vasco Reale uh, uh, painting, and what we fail to see in classical art is, for the most part, this radial symmetry about a vanishing point. If we follow those parallel lines, those nominally parallel lines, well, some of them will meet, but there is not, in general, going to be a common meeting point. And perspective is something that we don't generally see in classical art. We see foreshortening. We see the idea that objects at a greater distance get, uh, uh, are smaller. But for the most part, what we think about as perspective does seem to be a Renaissance invention. And Durer 